as an architect, I'm a firm believer that our built environment shapes our mind and our behaviour. This quote from Buckminster Fuller particularly resonates with me because it doesn't just speak of the power of our, of our environment to shape our mind, it also talks about the positive effect of a good environment in shaping us, in result, will shape the lives of others and our surrounding. And this idea of empower change by design is a sacred journey that I would say many architects pursue through the course of our professional journey. 18 years in the practice, I do appreciate that architecture is an extension of our value system because the way we consume our resources to shape the environment very much reflects our own value system, who we are, where our priorities lie. And this idea of empowerment, of change by design, is very much utilizing design ideologies that are inclusive and inspiring for us to bring communities together, form meaningful relationships, and more importantly, it is about creating this common ground to instill the belief for our communities to make that difference themselves. And many a times, this exploration starts from the fundamental question that we ask through design. In the case of an architect, what is the role of architecture and design in enhancing or amplifying values to enrich and empower our communities with the design that we, we touch? And today, I will share three strategies of how we can empower by design in three completed projects. So first, strategy of integration. And this idea of empowerment uh, emb embodies itself in quite a large project. Our Tampanese Hub is the first integrated community and lifestyle development in Singapore. It brings together sports, community spaces, civic components, idea of lifestyles, retail, all under one roof. It champions this idea of a whole of government approach. We have 12 government agencies all housed together. But there in lies the question, how do you, through design, brings beyond adjacency 12 typically quite siloed entities to create a model of synergy, to empower users, right? to come together to find new forms of sharing and collaborations. An idea is to conceptualize OTH as this three-dimensional form which is made up of interlocking components and parts. And each of these parts uniquely relating to one another uh, to form this complete uh, body. And what is quite key about such a strategy is immediately through a spatial or spatializing a concept of participation, you allow users from different entities to start connecting with one another. Uh, the hub itself is quite huge in, si in size. Uh, just to give a sense, it's about seven football field in area, all packed into one space. The Tampanese Tower Hub itself uh, brings in not just greenery, streetscape, uh, and more importantly, it embodies the idea of how it reached out to various ages and various interest groups within the residents of Tampanese. One key part, obviously, besides streetscapes that it brings in to activate uh, the spaces, there's also the component of civic entities like library, uh, with, again, different shaded quality environments, little with a maker space, heritage gallery, and key within each of these spaces, say even from the library, you can see areas like town square. And within that, there's also sports components like halls and pools, and even the perform performing arts theater that serves as cinema for the residents at different times of the day. All in all, OTH embodies and blends the various aspects of everyday community life all under one roof, and really find in its unique way of how it empowers the users to start to also sculpt their own kind of daily lives for one another. And very much this idea really amplifies this concept of a place of many places, 
where this whole host of facilities it all is all housed under one roof, close to 30 over components of them. And the facade itself also express this interlocking programmatic components of how they interrelate with one another. And more importantly, it's really the spaces that speaks of this cross-participation, the exchange that different users groups have with one another. Say if you are there walking through the space or in the study corner, you are fully aware of what the other group is actually partaking. And through spectatorship, we can encourage participation. An idea is such synergistic model and union of spaces also allows us to integrate blue and green environmental network that enhance social equities, giving residents access to rooftop greenery, pools, sky terraces, and really providing spaces of respite and leisure for all. And with the model of synthesis, it also allows us to embed a layer of technological uh, advancement where we can harness uh, different modes of uh, provision to create a closed loop ecology where, an example, the energy that we harness from the rooftop of the stadium powers the light within the basement. Or food from hawker centres and F&B outlets are converted with eco-digesters into fertilisers that are used on the rooftop. And pushing that thinking of technology harder is about how it continues to empower users and stakeholders uh, through robotics, smart management systems, and even advanced analytics uh, to understand their own behaviour and impact in the way they consume energy throughout the entire building. Most importantly, the idea of a human-centric development really calls for the participation of the residents, in this case of Tampines. So close to a year of residents' engagement took place uh, to reach out to close to the 250,000 residents of Tampines in one way or another, be it online or physical interaction, from ideation to the whole current daily operation of the space. The residents have a part in shaping what's happening within the space of Tampines Town Hub. And quite key, the number speaks for itself. So uh, on average, monthly, there are close to 1.3 million of uh, visitors and annually 17 million. That's equivalent to a mini airport kind of a, uh, visitorship. And this speaks depth about the level of ownership and participation through empowerment in design. And I think in terms of model of integration, this is where we start to appreciate the power in design if we are purposeful that the whole can be greater than the sum of parts. Next project of a completely different scale, probably half the size of this hall. So this is located in the void deck of a matured housing estate towards the east at Marine Terrace. Uh, it tackles, however, a really large global issues. We know we are all facing the silver tsunami in terms of uh, aging landscape. But more importantly, I think embedded within these numbers, it's quite funny, I was thinking, just to share the numbers, that in 2030, one in four of us will be over 65 years old. But it doesn't really apply to this room, but it's real, all right? Okay, and, and one of the key parts within that is the subtlety of this number. That in, within this, there is a segment of stay-alone seniors are also increasing in numbers. And this group of seniors face challenges like social isolation, depression, and sadly, even suicide within their own homes, all right? And here, we, there lies the opportunity for design to look at empowering this group of users in a unique way. And through programming, we use the agency of food. All right? In this case, uh, where it's located, just to share, in the void deck of this uh, housing uh, block. So a good life makan, the idea makan is in Malay to eat. And of course, with that aptly, Right in the centre of the space is a kitchen, and adjacent to it, an open, porous dining area, all right, that with all the dining and kitchen provision. Key is this stay alone seniors gather here daily. Some of them bring their own food after some groceries 
to cook for one another. And this shifts away from the current typical social aid model where food and services is brought to their doorsteps. But it works contrary to seniors who are already socially isolated. And the idea is really through the program of food, we create encounters, interfaces for the seniors, be it about pre-cooking, the washing up, or the actual process of eating, many chances and opportunities for them to interact with one another. And key part associated with it, it's also how it's talking about ground up a community support located within a HDB estate. This is where the power of place and programming allows us to shift and reframe the roles of members of our community, where the seniors are no longer seen as objects of charity, but active participants of the community. Because here, they cook food for one another. So in the process of helping themselves, they are actually also actively helping others. And in this act, you build self-worth, self-respect, but also a stronger sense of community, but particularly for this forgotten group of our community. And the idea of porosity is key in design, where we create a seamlessly connected space. Design strategy is instead of the typical glass box or gated kind of compound, we design the facade with a whole array of full height doors. It creates an inclusive setting that sends the message that the residents are welcome from all walks of life, every corner of the estate. And one of the qualities that it creates, it's also it blurs the boundary between what's in and out. And with that, you reduce the stigma of the members who step into the space. And what's also quite wonderful is that curious onlookers are actually invited to also feast with the elderly. And in design, uh, ideas of colours is quite key. So depicted in food texture, the notion of colours is embedded within the entire centre. Again, to talk about the, this misnomer that uh, elderly are associated with muted palettes, something a lot more sterile and dull. But colours here play a role to help uh, some of the elderly that are suffering from mild dementia to zone spaces. And on top of that, purposefully designed graphics also breaks down the language barriers for the senior citizens of all kind of race and background. Key thing about Good Life Makan is beyond activating and enlivening a characterless void deck, is that it really enrich and empowers the lives of many of the stay alone seniors to allow them to continue to be active and to continue to be participants of our community. Last project is really coming closer to this age group where we're talking about uh, how we can power through reimagination. Uh, the client is actually a youth a charity organization, Hardware Network that reach out to close to 1,500 youths annually. I think to date, about 12,000 youths. So they have this power to really contact and be touch points to the youths. Uh, the brief calls for a new workplace location for hardware. And uh, the question of design comes when we first look at their old office. And this was the space. Uh, one word, underwhelming. All right. And, and it's, it's worrying because of the lack of understanding of how your work environment also forms an, a part of your identity. And these are touch points to youth and future leaders. So obviously with such challenges comes opportunities. And the space that was given, uh, something again open, but it has this quality of space. And this idea that this notion of a blank slate becomes the design driver where we conceptualize a notion of a highly flexible and adaptable canvas made of different building blocks, components to allow the users to shape the space. So with a whole series of kit of parts, effectively, the youth participants are allowed to make their own space. And, and through the entire process, this is just a sense of the quality of space at the entrance. So you're greeted by this voluminous space, something that's continuously and seamlessly a link. 
So the idea of openness and ferocity kind of already amplify one of their key message in inclusiveness. And then you can see the idea of modular components and how plugins are embedded within this entire system. So there's also a unity of materiality in raw kind of ply finish to add tactility and a sense of authenticity for the quality of space. And within a setting like a training rooms, with the participant coming into place, this is where they can start to shape the different set, the kind of different uh, situations of how they choose to interact with one another. Right, again, uh, there's also more personalized spaces of niches and pods. If you choose to have some uh, quality of space that's a lot more intimate, but embedded again behind the design is the whole sets of thinking of a closed loop arrangement. In this case, slightly smaller. So it happens with getting the youth to adopt each of the vertical planted boxes uh, to the idea of smart energy monitoring uh, in order for them to understand their own impact and footprint in the use of this space. And through such uh, means and devices, you empower the youths to be responsible and socially, not just on the social dimension, but also in terms of extending that care for the environment. And all in all, I think the key part related to this workspace is about creating this open canvas that liberates mind and spur the youths and leaders of our future, uh, their imagination into being. And this sense of imagination hopefully will also carry beyond this site to the larger uh, global stage, our cities, uh, as also areas where there's endless possibilities and opportunities. And I've just touched on these three key strategies of how we can empower change through design strategies of integration, programming, and last but not least, the idea of reimagination. And this is where the power extends beyond this project. So from some of you may be aware, across the landscape of Singapore, there is already a whole host of different integrated community development that is either already built or emerging uh, in the cityscape. And also equally important that there is also emerging uh, small-scale community-based networks of void deck centres that are re-energised and refreshed to play and complement the part of the larger components as well as this community-based support infrastructure. And I want to end off with this slide of a quote from Gandhi, I think popularized by also Obama during his campaign speech about be the change that we want in the world. As an architect, I empower change by architecture and design. So to the future leaders of our world, I will encourage you to find your own vehicle to empower that change. And we know change cannot be about waiting for someone or something to happen. We have to be the protagonist of that change. And change begins with all of us. Thank you so much.